All right, good morning. We're calling the Rankin County Board of Supervisors meeting to order at this time. Uh, Mr. Craig Slay, would you have an inv invocation for us, please, sir? Father, we're so grateful to gather before you today on this occasion. Thank you for your for uh, the reasons that we celebrate the life that you have given to us. I thank you, Father, for those people who, uh, who take responsibility, uh, who are engaged, Lord, and who uh, want to preserve life. Father, they, uh, they use the gifts that you have given to them so that they might be of service and of benefit to others. Thank you for those folks, Lord, who, who serve us as a community. Thank you for a community, Father, in which we live where we can celebrate the ways, uh, the many ways that we help each other. Father, thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together so that we might consider the actions of government. Father, we might govern ourselves. Father, I thank you that you have given these gentlemen the skills and the abilities to sacrifice their time, energy, talents, and other things, Lord, so that they might serve us. I pray, Father, that you'll give them wisdom and discernment as we conduct the business of the county. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Craig. Okay, at this time we have uh, public comments and recognition, but we're going to move that back just for a few minutes until we have the family that gets here. We're waiting on a few more people, so we'll uh, move that back just for a few minutes. Well, uh, okay. Uh, we'll move on to old business minutes approval for December 31st, uh, 2014 and January 5th, 2015. Motion to approve. Got a motion by second. Mr. Johnson, second by Mr. Keith. Do I have any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Got consent agenda items. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Johnson. Second. Second by Mr. Keith. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Mr. John Sullivan, tax assessor. And just three items today. Uh, item A, petition to change the assessment on the 2014 real and personal property assessment road. Motion approved. Motion second. by Mr. Bishop, second by Mr. Johnson. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Item B, petition to adjust the 2014 homestead exemption supplement roll. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Bishop, second by Mr. Keith. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. And item C, request to rescind the August 4, 2014 board order avoiding the 2012 and 2013 tax sale for pin number 36068 <coughs> due to property certifying to the state and didn't sell in the tax sale. Since it's certified. Motion approved. Second. Motion by Mr. Bishop, second by Mr. Keith. Now, what is, can you explain just a little bit on that? What is These are the ones that basically slip through the cracks. They, they, they go certified to the state, and based upon the timing when they issue their certification for um, it certifying to the state, right. it may have already gone through the tax sale. Gotcha. So you avoid the tax sale. It's okay. It's a timing thing. And more of a paperwork, trying to clean up the paperwork? Yes. Okay. Any more questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, John. Miss Bridget Herring, purchasing clerk. Okay. Second. 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 Let's hold up one second, Miss Bridget. Yes, I think we've got all the players here. Yeah. Okay. At this time, we have the recognition of individuals participating in the rescue of four-year-old Helena White following the accident on Star Road in Rankin County, Mississippi. Um, Sheriff and Craig, are y'all going to be handling this as far as? Absolutely. I want the sheriff to join me in this. I see sheriff has a camera. <laughs> okay. He's going to be in position to take the camera, so I take a picture. Uh, let me take a resolution today, Mr. President, that I am uh, pleased to be able to present on behalf of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, and at this time, what I'd like to do 
uh, I'm going to run the risk of calling out the names and individuals that I'd like to come forward at this time. Uh, Ms. Sherry Jackson, would you please step forward and come join us up front here? Uh, and you're going to need to turn and face Ms. Right. <laughs> uh, Jackson and I have already had a conversation this morning about uh, her comfort level. So we welcome you. I know that there's a big crowd here. Uh, and so everybody just needs to understand there's a lot of nervousness around here. Uh, Ms. Jackson's uh, son, Tristan, is a college student uh, and needed to be in class today. He could not join us, but I do want to mention his name. Harmon Jackson, uh, come forward, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jackson was involved uh, in the rescue efforts. Uh, Ms. Jackson's daughter, Jessica Dixon, is a, a college student. She's actually at UMC. Uh, she is in class today and could not get an excused absence, so we excuse her absence from us today. We thank her for her participation. Uh, William Banks, Deputy William Banks. Please. I'm sorry. Did I have the wrong name? That's what you missing. Okay, I'm sorry. He's William, coming. Yes, okay. Come forward, <laughs> I, I apologize. I got that wrong. I've got Clay and Spencer coming up. I had William and Clay mixed up in my head. Uh, William Banks uh, involved in the rescue. Noah Cheeks is Noah with us today. Uh, by chance, he's Noah, got a class. Noah is a I believe is a college student. Evan Osborne did Evan make it? Okay, both of those guys. Uh, I know that Evan is at Southern. Am I right? Are they both at Southern? Noah's at PRCC. In okay, Arizona. all right. Uh, and so both of those gentlemen um, just happened to be. Uh, handy at the moment and jumped in and assisted in the rescue. They're both college students. We're not able to be here. Uh, Deputy Wade Spencer, please step forward. Wade, I apologize. I called you William Banks. Right. William's probably more offended than you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fire Chief Aaron Graham, Robin Hood Fire Department. Aaron, come forward. And we're going to let Aaron stand in for all of the folks that showed up from Robin Hood, of which there were a number. Uh, we appreciate very much uh, Robert the Donkey Fire Department and their assistance in this effort. Uh, is Brett Issue here this morning, Brett? Hey, come on. Come, Brett. I'm excited to see you back there hiding. Uh, Brett is the Rankin County Fire Services Coordinator, and uh, Brett was involved uh, in this effort as well. Uh, and then we have two paramedics from AMR. Uh, we have Jimmy Miller and Todd Shook. I think they were on their way. Thank you, gentlemen, come forward. It's a, it's a great privilege for me on behalf of the board to be able to recognize these individuals for their effort uh, in the rescue of Helen White. And I'm going to read this resolution uh, that has been prepared and which will commemorate this recognition. It will also, uh, we will get it signed. We'll also have several copies made so that uh, the individuals who would like to copy the resolution are going to be able to be provided one. Let me read this resolution. Commending our Rankin County citizen responders, our Rankin County law enforcement officers and employees, and our medical professionals for extraordinary actions of bravery in responding to the emergency situation on Star Road in Rankin County, Mississippi. Whereas Rankin County, Mississippi is abundantly blessed uh, with citizens who give no thought to their personal safety and well-being whenever there is an emergency situation calling for action. And whereas on the afternoon of December 28, 2014, following an automobile accident that occurred on Star Road in Rankin County, citizens who lived near the accident scene heeded the call for help and responded to a vehicle that was overturned in the roadside ditch filled with water. In the overturned vehicle was a child, Helen the White, age four. <laughs> Helena was locked in her, into her child seat, submerged in the freezing water, and was unable to free herself. And whereas the Rankin County residents that I have just named here, Sherry Jackson, Tristan Jackson, Harmon Jackson, Jessica Dixon, William Banks, Noah Cheeks, and Evan Osborne, acted with great bravery and heroism by entering the frigid water to free Helena from the vehicle. This group worked together to ultimately free her from the child seat restraints and to administer life-saving uh, C, uh, CPR until law enforcement, emergency responders, and the ambulance personnel were able to arrive on the scene. Whereas Deputy Wade Spencer of the Rankin County Sheriff's Department responded to the scene and administered <coughs> life saving CPR to Helena, and assisted Chief Aaron Graham of the Robin Hood Valley Fire Department 
and Rankin County Fire Services Coordinator Brett Ishi and the AMR paramedics Jer Jimmy Miller and Ty Shook. And whereas during the course of the rescue effort, numerous additional emergency response personnel arrived on the scene to be available. Most notably, members of the Robin Hood Volunteer Fire Department, whose dedication to the safety and protection of Rankin County citizens is noteworthy and greatly appreciated. And whereas the rescue and resuscitation of Helena White is a testimony to the bravery and heroism of all who were involved, and a further testimony to the quality and commitment of the citizens of Rankin County to selfless service to our fellow citizens. It's therefore resolved by the Rankin County Board of Supervisors that the responders identified in this resolution are deserving of high praise and special recognition from the citizens of Rankin County for their extraordinary acts of bravery and heroism in the rescue and resuscitation of Helena White on December 28, 2014. These individuals have exhibited the highest ideals of citizenship and service to our fellow citizens, and all Rankin County citizens recognize and appreciate the selfless actions of these brave men and women under extremely difficult circumstances. And with us today <coughs> is uh, Helena and her mom, Chastity, and her little brother, whose name I don't know. <laughs> Trip, okay. Uh, would you would you stand, please, and come yeah, stand here? Yeah. And we are so excited. I think it goes without saying, Can't we're you. very excited <laughs> that at least uh, we are able to celebrate ultimately uh, what was accomplished on that day. Y'all set up here. And uh, set up here. it's a it's yes. a it's a great testimony to these said. individuals. Yeah, set her, set her right here. Okay. We're really excited. Thank you for coming. Chastity, thank you for making the effort to come. Uh, and so, but would you join me in thanking these individuals? <laughs> volunteering your, uh, and sacrificing your own safety so that we might be able to celebrate this little child right here being here with us today. Amen. Um, Kim Brown has uh, something he wants to share with everybody from uh, being something like that. Yes. Uh, Don Wynn, who owns the Sunny's Barbecue, he wants to make sure, he wants to get all y'all together and feed y'all. So uh, he wasn't able to come today, so called and just one best to know, you know, let y'all know. So after everything's done, if y'all meet me out and we get it all set up, so y'all can go down there and all eat together. Very great. great. Wonderful. Thank great. Everybody got photos? I tell you what, can you be chastity in the middle of everybody tight get a little bit tied around everybody? Put her in the middle. <laughs> I would be too with all those boogie bears. <laughs> Thank you very That's much. Guys. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Are there any people that need jobs? I bet she is hot. <laughs> Burn it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guys, I'd just like to say on uh, on behalf of the Rankin County Board of Supervisors, thank you so much for the ones that were able to be out there. And, you know, we really don't realize how God plays a part in our life. 
and I can assure you, people were in the right place at the right time, and God has blessed us a beautiful child, and thank you so much for all of the, you know, every piece of the puzzle that came together. So God was definitely in this to make sure that Helena has our life, and, and there's something in store for Helena. She was saved for a reason. So we appreciate each and every part that you guys play a part in this. And to go on even further, that's what emphasizes even more so in our response, uh, our, our volunteers out there. You know, I know that you guys were in the perfect place at the perfect time, but we have volunteers out there from the fire department that absolutely just, you know, give up their lives for no pay whatsoever. And we have a ton of volunteer fire departments out there. And it's, you know, it's numerous times that we, you know, it's tragedies like this that brings this community together and the deputies and, the, and everyone, AMR, everyone together to, that makes us proud to be from Rankin County and a piece of this. But again, without God's help in this, nothing would have happened. So thank y'all very much. So y'all have a great day. Oh, look at that. Here, she's got her. <laughs> Miss Lewis has got you a bear. And Miss Lewis is here every single meeting, so I can assure you she's part of the bunch here. So, But thank you all so much again for all your time and your effort. And again, you know, it's, it's times like these, you know, if you see somebody stranded, help them out. That's what we're all about. That's exactly what we're here on this earth for. So thank you guys so much. Y'all are all welcome to stay if you want, but it's going to be pretty long. It is going to be a little long, so if y'all <laughs> don't run over each other, y'all have a great day, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, he was. He did show up. Huh? Happy Badgers. What? He's traffic band. Was a traffic band? Uh, actually, uh, I had. To, of death. Oh. I couldn't make the visitation. I had to run by the family. They had a oh. so I ran by there. Got a little hung up a little longer. Miss Helena. Miss mm -hmm. Helena. Uh, yeah, thank good you. Seat. Miss Helena. Thank you very much for being here, baby. Very, very much. We look forward to seeing you in the future for a long time. <laughs> I've looked around Beautiful. Just your size. <laughs> I've got a 10-year-old about your size. <laughs> so, y'all have a great day. If y'all ever need anything, holler back, okay? You bet. Okay. If we've got all the pictures and we've got everyone ready to go, we'll get back to business. Bid opening? Yep, we've got bid opening from Miss Bridget Herring, purchasing clerk. Sheriff, thank you for putting all that together. Yeah. You bet. Last time I looked here. Y'all ready? We're ready. Sure. The first bid opening is for one or more wheel loaders. I know this is the this is where it's supposed to be. First bid is from Deep South Equipment. Bid price one hundred fifty-eight thousand, guaranteed buyback ninety thousand. Who is it from? Deep South. Deep South. Yeah, Thank you. The next bid is from J JWH Equipment. Bid price $134,250, guaranteed buyback $93,975. This bid is from Lyle Machinery. Bid price $149,999. Guaranteed buyback $81,500. 
bids from Mid South Machinery. Bid price one hundred forty-five thousand. Guaranteed buyback seventy-five thousand. It is from Puckett Machinery. Bid price $157,355. Guaranteed buyback $110,000. Hmm. How much was there? Is $157,355? Okay, thank you. This bid is from Scott Equipment. Bid price $179,988. Guaranteed buyback $105,000. Bid is from Stribling Equipment. Bid price $159,900. Guaranteed buyback $110,000. What was the what was the bid price? $159 what? $900. $900, okay. I recommend those be taken under advisement. Okay, motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Mr. Bishop. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. The next bids are for one or more wheel loader, I mean motor graders. <coughs> the first bid, JWH equipment. Bid price, $217,240. Buyback, $130,344. from Puckett Machinery. Bid price $240,451. Buyback $155,000. Bid price two hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred from Stribling Equipment. Buyback one hundred sixty one thousand. Y'all get it? Mm -hmm. I recommend those be taken under advisement. So move. Sir. Motion by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Johnson. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Final bids are for one or more tandem dump trucks. Do we specify which model we want? Do, do, do On we? the, like the, not this, but the last one. On the specs? Yeah. No, you can't specify a model. You just okay. have a, compare it to a, you can say equivalent to a certain model, but you can't write out a specific spec for a machine. Okay. I don't know much about, you know, motor graders and wheel loaders, so. Um, the first bid for the tandem dump trucks is from Empire Truck Sales. The bid price is $114,805. And they did not get the guaranteed buyback price. Uh -oh. 
So what would that go down as a zero, or how does that? Um, that they didn't meet specs. They they're required to get that. Okay. The next bid is from Truck Works. Truck Works. Truck Works. <laughs> the Kenworth. The bid price. $113,016.88 and they did not get a buyback. So. They, they've listed out to the side options for different things, but it should have been included. But they didn't give a buyback either. This is the first bid from Tri-State. Um, this bid is for a MAC bid price $123,248, 36-month buyback $59,500. The bid price of what was exactly? $123,248. Yeah, 48, okay. Bid is also from Tri-State Truck Center. It's for an international bid price, $112,546.66. Guaranteed buyback at 36 months, $50,000. They noted um, exceptions to the specs on the CFM air compressor, the size of that, one piece windshield, and then the tire size is a different size than what's in the specs. You said that was an international? Yes. Okay, thank you. I recommend those be taken under advisement. So moved. Second. And a motion by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Bishop. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Bridget. Thank you. Mr. Charles Parker, County Consulting Engineer. I see you got put on the agenda today, Mr. Parker. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have uh, two items on the agenda. The first being Greenfield Crossing Part 1. This morning I'm recommending approval of the final plat, and uh, we have a letter of credit in the amount of $55,518.90. Okay. Make motion approved. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Morrison, second by myself. Any questions? Is this the more of the extension of the one that's already started out there? This no. is part of, of Greenfield Station. I'm Correct. Just, yes. Any more questions? So everything is all in all in order. You be. Yes, sir. Uh, with respect to this particular part, uh, I found out yesterday afternoon that their surveyor had made a bust on some pins. Okay. Uh, it didn't affect the overall appearance of the plat, but it's some adjustments will have to be made. Okay. So I told them that I would recommend the plat this morning, and I just will not sign the plat myself until those corrections have been made. Okay. So do we need to make that a, a an exception if to the like to, to the motion? Well, when the what size? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What Would size you, homes are these going to be? These are what? It, what size was he recommended on this one? Because they were supposed to be moving up in, a, remember, yeah, in the sizes. Larger, yes. Sir. And this portion is right if you if you go in and you know there's a roundabout up that close. Once you get into actually the development, and this is one section right off that roundabout about on the north side. Okay. Um, Jared, would you uh, be okay with revising that to? Sure. Okay. Pending. Yeah. Pending you're, you're getting this proper uh, paperwork signed. Sure. The surveys. Okay. Yeah. I'll make that second that after the revision. So, any more questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. 
The second item I have on the agenda is our old Highway 49 drainage improvements. I'm recommending approval of pay request number six to Thornton Construction Incorporated in the amount of $31,089.24 and request an authority to issue that check. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Bishop. Questions? Yeah, aren't they pretty much getting pretty close to the end? Yes, sir. The pipes have been replaced. Yeah. There's basically one item left, which is putting asphalt back over the asphalt base back over the pipes. Okay. And actually, after we added these other pipes, we're still a little bit under our contract price. I suspect when we get the asphalt base in there, it will kick over a little bit, but very little. Not nearly as much as I had informed y'all earlier that it could cost. Okay. Yes, sir. That's uh, your question. It's, it's yeah. close. Well, I, I thought it was. I knew they were working on that last one. Yes. Here the other day. Okay. okay. All right. Any more questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Buster. Mr. Craig Slade, Board Attorney. Okay. Craig, I think Miss Renee has something oh. for you. Just a, just a few important items. <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> it's okay. I would have winged it. I think I'd have been okay. Uh, it looks like we made. A, I'm making up for our short meeting on January the 5th. If you look at my portion of the agenda here, there's several items. I, I would like to take items A, B, and C, Mr. President, with your indulgence, together since those are all setting public hearings for the same date and the same time, January 29th. 2015 at 9 a.m. for the Jimmy Lindsay nuisance property, District 1 property, the Alma Taylor nuisance property, District 1 property, and the Martha Bates estate nuisance property, which is District 4 property. I'd ask for, for one motion on those three. So All right. Move. Got a motion by Mr. <coughs> Got a motion by Mr. Bishop. <laughs> second, second by Mr. Morrison. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. <laughs> under public hearing under my section item a well, uh, we need to open a public hearing on the Johnny Rowland conditional use request Mount Helm Road District 4 property mr. Rowland is requesting a conditional use permit to operate a 100% recyclable tree service business on 64 acres located on Mount Helm Road he also wants to use a portion of the property for a what's called a corn maze and a pumpkin patch that would be open to the public this property is owned RE1. Uh, the trees from his tree service business will be the only rubbish uh, that is brought onto the site. It will be used uh, to be separated for both firewood and pulpwood. The remainder uh, will be ground for mulch. No rubbish or debris of any kind will be left on the property. Uh, he plans to build a pole barn to park equipment and tractors and the uh, I don't have to read that right last part, do I, Renee? Uh, we've got a few other uh, issues uh, that we want to address, too, as we look at this from a conditional use standpoint. So at this time, we'll open that public hearing. I'll ask, I'll ask if there's anyone here to speak in opposition to the Johnny Rowland conditional use request. Anyone? Okay. Mr. President, I don't see anyone. Um, Renee, can I read these uh, conditions that's, here? That's what, no, that's what he proposes. Okay. Uh, here, here are the hours of operation as proposed, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, the grinder will, will run, uh, if I understand this, once every three or four months uh, because it's only uh, his material that's going to be brought in, so it'll be a limited use of the actual grinding operation. Uh, and uh, the contracting, he is contracting with a business in Raleigh that's going to come and chip the material. Is that correct? Okay. So those... If there are any other conditions, now would be the time to establish those. You've got your hours of operation that seem to me to be reasonable, eight to five, Monday through Friday, so no weekend uh, hours of operation. Um, in, in situations like this in the past, additional uh, conditions that have been considered are means of ing ingress and egress. This does not appear to be the type of, of, of planned use that's going to be a significant impact on road. Uh, other conditions that we've had in the past are, um, Renee, help me out here. Uh, we typically will do, uh, you know, setback from the road. Um, uh, we we will not obviously. He's already he's not allowed to have any kind of dumping on site, but we make sure that that's clear. 
Um, is there a condition that he uses, uh, like he said, stated, it will be his materials only mm -hmm. brought in? Um, that, that's what he said for uh, several years. That's what your plan is, right? Just his own material. Right. So that's, that's we can put that as part That's of the in the conditional use. Yes. Okay. What about the sound? Sound. He's, uh, uh, over 2,500 feet away, you said from? It's, uh, I was reading the EQ, they uh, recommend. And how far away, how far are you, Mr. Rowland? We're within Okay. And you said how, uh, Craig, how how often <coughs> would you be grinding? What's the? Every three or four uh, months. Probably every three months. Every three months or so? Okay. We're going to have to get enough grease. To start grinding, Craig. Well, Mike to Gotcha. Now, are you going to have firewood? Well, I work Monday through Friday, so why would you not open Saturday? Okay. I'm just looking for firewood. <laughs> <laughs> always. Get his number later. <laughs> any, any other conditions, gentlemen, that you can think of? The the property when we went over this before the the neighbor was fine with it right so i mean yeah all right okay all right at this time we'll close that public hearing uh hearing that there's no opposition here to speak on this matter uh so it'd be appropriate to take action i'll make a motion to approve second got a motion by mr johnson second by mr morrison any questions all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed like sign motion carries this time uh, we'll open the public hearing on the People's Construction Corporation conditional use request at 167 Gooley Road. This is uh, an act, uh, this is District 4 property. Uh, People's Construction Corporation is requesting a conditional use permit to add seven, a, a 7,000 square foot metal building for Killen Contractors, Inc. at 167 Gooley Road. The building will be used for vehicle storage. It's a 12.96 acre parcel zoned A2. Um, this time we'll open that public hearing. I'll ask if there's anyone here to speak uh, in opposition to the People's Construction Corporation conditional use request. Anyone? Mr. President, I don't see anyone here to speak in opposition to that matter. We'll close that public hearing. Be appropriate to take action. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Mr. Morrison. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Next item is the public hearing for the Willie Mae Fleming conditional use request at 337 Bell Cove, District 3 property. We'll open that public hearing. Willie Mae uh, Fleming is requesting a conditional use permit for a 1969 manufactured home placed on .74 <coughs> acre parcel. Uh, it, was, it was placed there in 2009, so we're kind of doing this in reverse here. Property is zoned A2. It requires a minimum lot size of one acre. Um, at this time, I'll ask, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the Willie Mae Fleming conditional use request? Anyone? Mr. President, I don't see anyone here to speak in opposition to that matter. We'll close that public hearing. At this time, it would be appropriate to take action. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve this. Second. Motion by myself, second by Mr. Bishop. Questions? John, I want to make sure for the records that uh, you have checked everything out and everything uh, is to standard and everything will be set. And this, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that we showed that is up off the road that will really never be seen that much anyway. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Item D under public hearing uh, is the action on a request, a written request from the City of Brandon regarding our new GS, GIS mapping data. Uh, if you look at Exhibit D, uh, 9D, you will see the written request from the City of Brandon. I want to draw your attention to uh, stipulations that are contained in that letter that are being self-imposed by the City. The data may only be used for in-house project planning. The data may not be used for final planning or project release, and the data may not be released to the public. Um, you will recall, gentlemen, that as it relates to our new GIS mapping data, we are in the testing phase, uh, the, uh, the review phase of that data. It has not been finalized. Um, however, uh, there are entities around us chomping at the bit uh, to get access to the data that we do have. It's close enough in its form. Uh, that those who are willing to 
uh, place stipulations on themselves like Brandon is are, are being allowed to. This board approved CMPDD getting access to this data at the last board meeting. Uh, and so this is a it's essentially an identical request from the city of Brandon for that data. So uh, unless you have any further questions about that, um, uh, your tax assessor's staff and your legal staff has looked at it and we don't see any issues given the stipulations. Gotcha. Well, that's uh, pretty much what we exactly, one of the things that were the reason why we did this to help, help out uh, municipalities, if I'm not mistaken, that was going to benefit all of Rankin County. That was one of the considerations That's that right. everybody in the county would be able to benefit from it. Correct. Okay. Well, I'm just asking, is this something that we, this is just a uh, volunteer thing, or is this something, since we got so much invested, that we share some? No. no. I mean, how does that work? I, I, I don't yeah, know. I, mean, that, I, I don't know. I'm just asking. I, I don't know that we've had that conversation. That was in the discussion when I mentioned to y'all that everybody's going to want this information and y'all could set stipulations to share in the cost that you incurred on getting this mm -hmm. um, and that's something up to y'all well um, kind of I mean kind of quick we just kind of got it off the ground and so we really hadn't had a chance to discuss and, anything like that and I it's, agree it's coming more and more people are going to ask when they find out we have this data yeah and it's going to be engineer companies, uh, electrical companies, municipalities. Right. Well, I think it's different with municipality versus those others. Oh, it's yeah, that's definitely industry then. private versus yeah. a governmental agency for sure. But it is an option. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, John, how would it work, though, if we start sharing our data and the updates are not provided? I mean, they're only going to take a snapshot of today, right? Correct. Not, we're not going to continue to update going forward. I don't every plan time. to. Okay. No, I, right. they, they would have it as of the day that, that day. they received the data on all the updates. Okay. Now it'd be totally up to them on what they want to layer on top of our layers. All right. Okay. So, I make a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Bishop to approve this. Second. Second by Mr. Morrison. Any more questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Gentlemen, the next item is a is consideration of and potential action to adopt a resolution of support for the extension of local and private legislation for Rankin County recreational grants. Uh, that's item E in your packet. You'll see the resolution. It's uh, Unusual for me, I guess. It's about a half page. <laughs> you didn't write it, yeah. did you? No, no comments, please. Uh, at any rate, <laughs> the resolution is is fairly simplistic. It is seeking an extension of a piece of local and private that has a repealer attached to it. This is a piece of local and private that has been around for multiple legislative terms. It authorizes Rankin County, only Rankin County to expend through the Board of Supervisors in your discretion up to a maximum of $50,000 per year for the purpose of recreational grants that are made available to qualifying entities. Qualifying entities being a, pri a private, nonprofit, qualified, tax-exempt entities. Uh, examples would be the Reservoir uh, Athletic Association, uh, sc school uh, affiliated school entities such as the B Club uh, for Brandon High School and, and, and like entities and it's for the purpose of, of an enhancement of recreational facilities that provide for youth sport activities to Rankin County youth. If the repealer goes forward we won't have the authority to expend those funds uh, so you're being advised that if you would like for that legislation to be extended, that we would need a resolution authorizing you guys to speak your support to that to the legislature. Yeah. And, and it, even if it, we do this, it's still up to each board every year to what budget. That's correct. Uh, this just gives us the authorization. Yes. This does not lock us into having to put it in the budget. You just do not have to spend anything that simply authorizes you to do so should you choose to do so. Right. Where it's been being. Correct. 
for eight years. So. Which is kind of what we did uh, mm -hmm. two years ago whenever we uh, backed it off from 50000 I think, to 25000 if I'm not mistaken, whenever yeah. we backed it off our budget. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's, it's, it's no different. It's, it's just a uh, – Just an Put it out there. Right. If, in case. Yeah. Okay. You won't have the ability to do it if, if it's not extended. Gotcha. Got a motion by Mr. Bishop. Second. Second by Mr. Morrison. Any questions? All, I, all I'd like to oh. say is it has been um, it's been greatly used and greatly appreciated and the things I know throughout all districts where the it's been used are things that the generations will enjoy and appreciate it's not like a one-time um, use it's something that that's there that uh, your grandchildren will be able to appreciate what you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly, and it's what the money went to to help whatever it was done. And I know everything that I've, I've used it for will be things that you know hundreds of people at this point use it. So if you look right. at it from a tax dollar perspective, it's nickels. Yes, sir. right. When it comes to the usage of exactly. how many people get to yes, utilize right. from well, it. Well, when it comes down to it, it basically it affects children. I mean, that's what uh, you know. It, yeah. it directly impacts the, the children and the families. And I know that it's not a it's uh it's one of those budgetary items that uh, discretionary where we can use it or not and uh, I'm like Jared that uh, you know we have used it over the last four to six years and it has impacted greatly especially out in the outer lying areas and stuff like that sometimes so it's been very well received any more questions all in favor say aye, aye. aye. all opposed like sign motion carries Mr. President, for items F and G, I would uh, like to uh, invite and recognize uh, some distinguished guests. Uh, Mr. Josh Carlisle, who is the city clerk of the city of Flowood, is here with us. Mr. Lim Adams, who is the uh, in-house legal counsel of the city of Flowood. Uh, and I've forgotten your name. <laughs> Rhodes. <laughs> Mayor Rhodes uh, is here with us today. Thank you guys for coming. If y'all want to come forward, um, uh, Mayor, please. Uh, and I'm, I'm asking them to come forward in the event that there are questions about this. <laughs> I want a ready answer here available. This item, uh, items F and G sort of go together. They, re they uh, relate to the exact same project. Today we're going to be considering and potentially acting on a request from City of Floodwood uh, to, uh, uh, to address a new interlocal agreement between Rankin County and the City of Floodwood that will substitute for and replace three existing interlocal agreements. Uh, between Rankin County and the City of Flowood that relate to uh, what we will call the Dogwood area, okay? Uh, there are three projects involved. One is the Dogwood Festival uh, Market, the Dogwood Promenade, and the Lakeland Commons. Uh, these are all TIF projects uh, that go way back before this board. In fact, uh, the Dogwood Festival is a May 2000 uh, project. Uh, if I recall correctly, in October 2003 is Dogwood Promenade, and in June of 2004 is Lakeland Commons. Uh, at that time, the board, this board authorized, or the prior board authorized uh, a, 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 a TIF bond issuance uh, and the uh, pledging of the county's avalorum tax increment uh, to service those bonds, and those construction projects went forward. You know, the rest of the the story is that those have been very successful economic development projects and the city of Flowood has the opportunity now uh, to do a refunding of the TIF bonds and they have chosen to do so by having an issuance of general obligation bonds for the refunding. So this will take it out of the TIF protocol and move it over to a GO. So, uh, how, how does that affect the county? Well, we've got existing interlocal agreements that are going to need to be revised or reformed. Uh, one particular interlocal is going to be amended. A new interlocal is going to substitute for each of the interlocals that are in place. And so that's what's before you today to approve uh, the pursuing or the going forward of Flowood to issue the GO bonds that will, in essence, pay off the existing TIF bonds but allow for those bonds to be uh, secured in like manner that the TIF bonds are being, that have, have been secured, no change in the security status, of which a part of that is the county's pledge of abalone revenue, okay? So the, the pledge will remain, 
The, the life of the bonds are not changing. Those are the same. The impact, what's the impact of the county? The impact of the county is that there will be, we anticipate, a significant savings because Flowood has been successful in securing a radically reduced interest rate on the GO bond. And so the difference between the TIF bond rate that was issued back in 2000 and 2003 and 2004, uh, with today's interest rates, uh, we're going to be able to realize a significant savings. Uh, the anticipated savings over the life, the remaining life of the bonds is, we feel, your staff feels comfortable telling you it is at least $2 million. Yeah, that's, I'll say that's significant. That's significant. That's a no-brainer. That's, <laughs> that's over 10 years? The next it it will be over the next uh, 10 years, yes, sir. Nine correct. years. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, so item one would be the approval by this board <coughs> of the substitute interlocal agreement that will substitute for the three existing interlocal agreements and the authority of the president to execute that document. It will be approved by the AG's office and all be done. Uh, and then item G is uh, a, a little bit of a twist on that with respect to the Lakeland Commons uh, interlocal agreement. We are going to be amending that interlocal agreement so that in section seven of the existing agreement, uh, it will allow for the county to, in essence, pay its portion of the Avalorum uh, in the amounts that will be the new bonded amount under the GO, okay? So it's going to be a different payment stream. We need to amend that interlocal so that the county doesn't pay more than it's supposed to, yeah. given okay. what we owe under the new interest rate. Okay. So those are the two items. We could take those together. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, do you have any comments? Would you like to say anything? The only thing I'd like to say is uh, this board and prior boards, uh, thank you for uh, investing in the city of Flowood and uh, also Rankin County. Uh, as you can see, the last three years, it's generated over $810,000 over the TIF payment. So uh, these were investments. Some of y'all were on this board. Jay, I believe you were. Yes, sir. Uh, but I just want to tell you thank you. It's a job well done, and, and uh, your uh, efforts are paying off tremendously for the county. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you sir. Thank you. That's government working together. We had... Uh, a few years ago we had a snafu because we lowered taxes and ended up short are we going to take care of all that now so all of this the adjustments to the interlocals y'all took care of all that all right okay. the the actual and, and i'm going to throw the numbers out but the actual savings is going to be 2.9 million for the county and city so you know we, we were in it together so yeah. we're going to save the city of Florida's going to save money also but anticipated for the county right at two million. Good Thank deal. You. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Okay. Items F and G, Mr. President, with okay, your yeah. indulgence, we could take those together as one motion. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept this? So moved. Got a motion by Mr. Bishop. Second. Second by Mr. Keith. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion carries. Good job, guys. Mr. President, the next item is item H. Uh, I've asked uh, Chad Davidson, who's with the Phelps Dunbar firm, to be present today uh, to help with uh, the explanation on this particular item. This is, uh, and with your indulgence, I, I'm just going to present exactly what the resolution says here, so just hang in there with me, okay? We're going to consider and potentially act on a resolution authorizing and approving the form and execution of an agreement as to the term of series 2013 refunding bond and a second amendment to the tax pledge agreement in connection with the issuance by the city of Pearl on behalf of itself and the county of a $10 million city of Pearl taxable urban renewal revenue refunding bond series 2013. That is the Childry Road urban renewal refunding project. To currently refund the $10 million city of Pearl taxable urban renewal bond, the Childry Road bond, Series 2004C, originally issued to assist in the development of the Bass Pro Bloomfield Project. Authority of the, and, and the authority of the Board President to execute all required documentation to effect the purposes of the resolution. Authority of Rankin County to do all things necessary to carry out the purposes and intent of the resolution. 
to include payment of any obligations, if any, set forth in the tax pledge agreement attached to the resolution and or all other documents referenced within this resolution. Oh, yeah. We all understand all every of bit of that. Every bit yeah. of that. <laughs> that is, uh, now it's on the record as to what we're acting on. This relates to, as I attempted to explain previously, this relates to the what we refer to as the Bass Pro Brave Stadium project. It's not a TIF project. This goes all the way back to the urban renewal bond issuance originally. And from that point, there has been a series of minor adjustments along the way, all of which are reflected in the resolution as to date and time. <coughs> what you need to know is that under the urban renewal bond project, there were uh, three series of bonds that went with that project that got the construction of the stadium out of the ground and the Bass Pro facility and maybe some additional construction, I don't recall, but these are all these are all related to the urban renewal project. The numbers on those are fairly significant. Just by way of recollection, this is not meant to be accurate uh, in any way. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50, $50 million dollars of that is what are known as the Series A bonds. Somewhere in the neighborhood of the original 43, uh, the B bonds were originally 22.5. The, the Bs were 22.5, the Cs, or 10 million, which is what's reflected here. What we're talking about today is only the seeds. It's the $10 million part of that. So I wanted to give you an overall concept of the total dollar amounts that have been involved in this bond, urban renewal bond project from day one, so that you understand that we're talking about the C bonds only. There, nothing that we're doing today will affect in any way the A and the B series of the bonds. The county's tax pledge stays the same. Uh, uh, what, uh, you know, there, there are no adjustments to that being requested. What is being requested today comes from the city of Pearl and obviously the holder of the C bonds, which is the developer. Uh, and the request is that the city of Pearl and the developer have reached an agreement whereby the city of Pearl can recoup some of its expense related to additional costs associated with the new Bloomfield outlet and also some assistance with respect to the stadium lease at the, that Pearl is obligated on. And so the developer is willing to undertake that <coughs> arrangement in exchange for an extension of the amount of time that would be available to ultimately pay off the C bonds. Throughout this, the history of this project, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, there has never been any payment made by any entity against the C bonds. Am I right? That's right. That's so, the, the developer has gone unpaid with respect to the C bonds from inception of the sale of those bonds. All right? So the developer is willing to continue to work with Pearl. In exchange, Pearl would like to extend the length of time under the bonds to be able to pay on the seas, assuming that the Avalorum revenue and other revenue that's pledged against that C bond uh, reaches a point where it can be paid. So the commitment is if we get the tax revenue that can fund it, it will eventually be paid to the C bond holders. We need more time to get that done. So how does, yes. what, does, does that put us at risk? I mean, as far as the county at all, I mean, how does that how does that affect us as far as any kind of risk as far as putting that out further and what is that? That's what I was going to clarify one thing. Um, the the Avalorum taxes, the only thing pledged towards the C bond or towards the bonds period is Avalorum tax from the Bass Pro uh, shop. Um, that pledge of the Avalorum tax really goes to the city, then the city pledges it to the trustee and runs through the indenture and so forth. But the pledge of the county's pledge of the Avalorum tax that would go to the C bond is continues to terminate on uh, 2024. The county's pledge does not extend out past into this next this additional 10 years that we're extending the C bond. So from the county's perspective, there's no additional, there's no extension of your pledge. Your your pledge is staying exactly the way it is today. Just to 2024. Yes. And the only reason we're having to act on this today is because we're party to the original deal. Right. The reader agreement, the original reader agreement, which has been amended several times, 
when we amended it in 2012 to refund the Series B bonds, um, one of the, we had to amend the rate agreement to allow for refunding. One of the provisions in that amendment said that any refunding, the term of any refunding bonds could not extend past the term of the bond that's being refunded unless the county and the city expressly agree in writing to do so. So that's what the agreement as to the term of the Series 2013 refunding bond agreement is about. Simply acknowledging that we're extending the term year to the county's agreement to. It. And then the, the amendment to the tax pledge agreement is essentially the same thing we did in 2012 when we refunded the Series B bonds. It's the substitution of reference to the uh, Series C bond, substituting the Series 2013 bond for the Series C bond so that. Just the name. The, just the name. Yeah, so the that, name so of the pledge, bond. So the pledge runs to the new bond yeah, through 2024. Your original tax it. pledge agreement will refer back to whatever the, the 2004 C, I think is what it is. Yes. That's what would be in the tax pledge agreement. We're going to amend the agreement to simply say it used to be the 2004 C, but now it's the 2013. That's okay. All, that's all we're doing. So is, is that no not, does that not just cost, the, uh, I mean, the county basically just kind of <coughs> carrying it a little longer. So the city, no, we're not actually. actually Actually, cities all on the city. But I mean, we're not getting, we won't get anything back. Our Avalorum revenue that we're getting off of Bass Pro mm -hmm. that is right now being funneled to pay a bond issue stops in 2024. That that Avalorum pledge right. stops in 2024. So after that, then we, 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 so we, we won't we get anything before 2024 yeah. anyway. Sir. We would not get any Avalorum before no, 2024. That, that pledge is already in place. Uh, now that's city just Bass is, Pro, just yeah, Bass Pro, just, just Bass Pro, the, and the city, the city's pledge, will extend to 2034. So that the city will continue. They've already approved that. They've already done that. Okay. So how much? I mean, and, and this is getting in off into their business, but it also ranking county. So how much are they receiving as far as benefiting from this? I mean, the city? as far as Pearl. The city has not gotten a dime out of this. But I mean, yeah. I, it sound, I thought I had heard that on the front end that they will be receiving because of extending this the out. The developer is, has an agreement with Pearl. I don't know the details, but some, some agreed upon amount of money is going to be paid from the developer to Pearl right. in present day time for the purpose of defraying some of Pearl's additional cost right. associated with police and fire protection and other costs that Pearl is incurring now. To, to cover that. In exchange, the developer is agreeing to do that in exchange for an extension of this period of time under the C bond to get it repaid. Now, the city's already made the deal with how much Avalorum they're going to give up, and they have to meet, I think, $2 million in sales tax before they weren't going to get anything. But now they're going to, if they not done this deal, Correct me if I'm wrong. Had they not done this deal, all the money over two million dollars would have gone to pay toward the C bond. The C $10 bond million dollars would not have received right. anything back. It's actually, everything over a million dollars. Oh, is it a million? Yeah, um, a million. Which, which has not been reached to, to up until I, I'm not sure about this is all fourteen dollars. But okay. once once the sales tax revenues exceed a million dollars, first million is the pledge of the A's and the B bonds. Once it exceeds a million dollars. Then the sales tax revenues from the urban renewal district site, excluding Bass Pro and, and Braves, which are still pledged to the A's and the B's, then that would go to the C bond. Okay. Um, and what essentially what the developers agreed to do is say, okay, anything over a million dollars, we'll give you, we're going to pay you back 50% of that to help you with your additional costs through 2024. So where's the two million coming in at then? There, well, that was the original cap. Okay. It, we, we have, that's been that was amended in 2010. There was an original two million dollar cap. But okay. That was taken out in 2010. So once the, once the sales tax revenues exceed a million dollars, then they as it stands right now they all go to the city line. All right. The city wouldn't see any of it. So the developers agreed to help the city out with these additional costs in exchange for like, re, the hope of being repaid. Yeah. Later down the line. So once a million dollars been reached, then the city would get a percentage of this yeah, money. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Okay. 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 Does that throw any tailspin as far as Judy and John's office and everything like that? I mean, does that make it any easier or any oh, harder? Yeah. I mean, that's, Man, they love this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd, I was kind of looking at the face of saying, "Okay, let's." I, I think. I think from a logistical standpoint, 
uh, our folks, Ms. Judy, has simply been cutting checks, and those go to the city of Pearl. And right. It's up to Pearl to, to, as I understand it, to divvy out from there under the agreements. That okay. Says. So where are we in 2024? We're, we're drawing our avalorum tax increment that would otherwise be paying a bond that's coming to the county coffers. Okay. How much, we start how, how much does the county get then? I Pro. have no idea what that number is. Well, after the first 10 years, I think we get the Avalorum off the stadium. But then the 20 years was for Bass Pro. We're going to start getting money in 2024. Yeah. 15 years. 2024, Jay, that's. 2019. Right, yeah. 2019 is the A deadline. 2024 is the B and C deadline. Okay. So the, the, if we're talking, on, if we're on the right target here, and I'm not sure that we are, but assuming that we are, if the A's relates primarily to the stadium, then we will derive that pledge for revenue will come to the county and not against the bonds as of 2019. 19? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is everyone clear with all this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got at least got updated on where Pearl is, so. <laughs> well, that's what I, yeah, that was some of my, my main concern was making sure that the county, and you feel good about this, Craig, yeah, I yeah. guess, Craig and Laura, that we are at no risk whatsoever. Yeah. We're we're still solid, whatever on that. Nothing really that's changed. Just, I, our, our involvement is simply because we were on the document originally and it requires our written authorization before they right. can monkey around with the language. That That's it. It's gotcha. not affecting us in any way. Okay. Well, maybe you should have went first before the two million. You know, the two million was kind of, you know, to show. That stopper. was sweet. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, that was sweet. <laughs> okay. So do we need to approve this? Yes. Yeah, the consideration that you actually will approve. All right, I make a motion to approve. I second. Motion by Mr. Bishop, second by Mr. Keith. Any more questions? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Thank you. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Item I. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Butch Lee is here uh, for items I and J, Mr. President. We have. Uh, one item action I, which is a discussion and potential action. This is a repeat from the prior uh, board meeting where we discussed uh, in some terms uh, the city of Brandon request regarding the securing of some additional parcels that are adjacent to our multi-purpose facility for the purpose of uh, access that is related to the planned City of Brandon Rankin Trails Recreational Complex. Did I get that name right? It's complex in there, Recreational Project Facility Complex. And so uh, Mayor Lee is here and I appreciate his being here to uh, address to you their request regarding those properties. And y'all will recall the discussion that we had. Mr. Mayor, if you will. Thank you. I'm sure you don't sit down and get a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to come this morning. I'll try to be as brief as I can. I've really got three points that I want to work through, and I took those three points and I've condensed them to something for you to look at and keep with you. I started to do a PowerPoint, but at the same time, I didn't want you thinking of making decisions on something you had seen. I'd rather you have a hard copy of it, so I'm going to give you that. I spoke to the Rank County uh, School District yesterday, their board, on some of the things I'm about to discuss here. Some of the things I'm about to discuss Obviously, I didn't talk about the multi-purpose property with them, but there are really three items here. I want to talk about a couple of pieces of property out there that I've got uh, some drawings I want to share with you, and I've got one for the engineer as well. Uh, and I also want to talk about two other things, streets in downtown Brandon, because I know we're entering a phase where uh, there's the potentiality of uh, some new buildings here in downtown. And I'd like to discuss some ideas that I'd like to share with you and like you to think on. So I'm not asking for action on, on that particular issue, but I've got some drawings I want to give you. And then I want to talk briefly about uh, 471. <coughs> so with, with that, I'd like to give you a copy of this. Okay. And I uh, would ask that you don't peruse through it all, but uh, kind of start with page one there, and we'll go from there. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Bit of that is the 
11 by 17 paper and fold it out. You can see the uh, multi-purpose property and that's the approximate boundary line. We did get a, and I'll be glad to share that with the county if you'd like it, our uh, boundary and topo map. Don't mind sharing that with the tax assessor at all. We served, I think we paid $70,000 for it to get it all right. So that is pretty much close to the 32 acres there on that first page that you see through that area. And that's a digital earth map. Very current. You can see the new building there. Second one is a map that is a representation off of the TOFO survey that we did as we begin entering the uh, development of this project. All of those lines, I want to make a special note and I'll put a box on there that you'll see it. Those are one foot elevation lines, uh, which lends to part of the discussion of those two pieces on those corners, A and B. So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about uh, A and B. Okay. Got it working now, sort of semi almost. You can fold those out a long yeah. way. Just there leave you go. Fold. My book here. Yeah. Second page, Jared. I'll wait. Uh, Second I'll page. You're working off second page, correct? That's right. Okay. So it's the most perfect property at the top of the page. Well, this uh, the front page you gave us is what y'all have, what you propose. I don't have it. Page. After we, if we approve the change, right? No, this, this is what you have right now. Sorry. Second page. Current Rankin County properties, plus or minus 32 acres. Yeah. There you go. No. See if you can figure that one out. <laughs> I got you. Go ahead on. Yeah, hang we got on. We're ready. Not quite. Oh, this is what they want. Good, Jay. Yep. Okay. So the first page is uh, an aerial uh, Google Earth, and that's approximately the boundary line of the existing 32 acres that are there. See the road coming into it, the front parking lot, and the parking lot in the back. So the next page is I took that off of our topo and topo survey. So I want to talk specifically about uh, A and B separately so that we don't confuse things. So again, I want to draw attention to those one foot elevation lines because that's the reason why we're having this discussion about A and B to begin with is the elevation lines. So the next page over is just specifically a blow up of A itself. And you'll find two pieces, two parcels there that are colored. One's colored red and one's colored green. The red is already City of Brandon property is where the fire station is at out there. Also got a water well there. And Region 8, we approached them about, that's actually behind and beside what they call their bus barn. Uh, they were very kind to give this to the project and we're gonna turn that into uh, improved surf, uh, parking, uh, asphalt parking lot for an improved trail to go down around those uh, old quarries that are down there. So that's kind of the purpose of that. And what we wanna do is connect that parking lot to the other side of the horse barn multi-purpose building. And that's the purpose of A. If you see that top boundary line, it actually corners, and there's, it's flagged very well out there. You can walk this and see these lines. That, uh, that corner, uh, we don't have enough room to put a road around to get behind the multi-purpose building, to get around that corner. Also in A is, uh, you've described it as a slough. Uh, I call it a mosquito hole. It holds water and, you know, West Nile and Chicken Gaia is a problem. We've had several cases of that over time. So we'd like to drain that and clean up that property right there and create a road in here. And I've got a representation of that as we go through it. So that, that's <coughs> talking about A. Are there any questions about A before we go on to the next one? With the, uh, and where you're saying A is at, are you proposing a road yes. through A? Uh, yes, from that parking lot up front, we'll build a parking lot there and have it gated so we can close it off. Okay. And uh, there'll be an access road to get in there, and that access road will actually tee to the right and tee to the left. Which parking lot are you talking about? Uh, right at the front of, uh, to the right of the existing entryway into the multi-purpose building. Okay. Uh, currently, there's a gray right. rock pile there. Right. Interacted with the Dale a little okay. bit on that. So we want to put a, a, a parking lot there and a drive that goes up in there. Now this drive I'm envisioning is a kind of a state park, you know, a 15 mile an hour two-lane road ultimately is what it'll turn into. We'll build it with uh, slag first, get that settled down, and in time we'll put curb and gutter in it and asphalt it. And I want to make sure, clarify this, Dale, uh, we're not currently using this this part A 
at present never really have, have we, as far as that area, where it's the slough and the... Uh, right, small area for... A, okay. But that other is pretty much unused, correct? Not usable. Gotcha, okay. Just want to hold, well, we want to open it up and drain it, clean it up, and, you know, we've got plans to clean up that fire station. That whole appearance out there, since the right. sheriff has taken over that, cleaned up the multi-purpose building, done a wonderful job out there. Right. And we want to complement that whole road to look like that as kind of right. an entryway into the Rankin Trails project. Okay. So it all, all kind right. of fits. That's kind of the idea. Are you, you know, if you go out there and look where A is, where the flags are, that is very close to where our existing road is. I mean, it's only like 10, 12 feet. We don't want to, we're not going to use that line. There'll be a buffer of trees there. What we want to do is drain that and get a drain out of there to the road so we can get that water out of there. And we'll build a road about halfway between that flag and that power line. So as you know, so we say where that flags are, I mean, yeah. there's no buffer. That's No, no. <laughs> we want a green buffer there. Okay. We want tree. We don't want to take the trees out. We want right. to leave them. Well, so we're just trying to get on the left side of that slough. You see, that, and then we'll clean that slough out and get it drained. How out. much? How much buffer are you looking at there, Mayor? Uh, what I mean, basically. Ten yards, fifteen yards, yeah. twenty yards. To as make much it, as we can keep more, make it more attractive. Yeah. What you're saying? Well, why don't we just get what you need and leave the buffer? Let the buffer be part of. Because we'd like to uh, get rid of that mosquito hole. Uh, there's, there's used tires in it and everything else, and we're just trying to clean all the property up out there. Plus, we got to get around the top end. So if you get on the top end and you look at it right in the heart of that, we've got to have enough to get a road around that to get around to it. And that will connect to the other side of it. Uh, the top right corner is marked very clearly, as is the, the corner on the left of that triangle. So you can see there's quite a bit of elevation that you got to kind of come around in there to get around that that point and there is an old road there already a couple of ditches but we'll, we'll work through that where is where is the uh, where is this water hole you want to clean up I'm trying to it's uh, if you if you envision Here. taking that a that box is there plus the five acres description is there it comes all the way down almost to the front of the property right in the center of that triangle Right here. Okay. So it eats up most of the most of the front end of that triangle there. Any other thoughts on A before I shift over to B? Nope. Well, I don't understand how you're gonna get rid of the slough without knocking down all the trees and, and keep it up. Those but it's open on the bottom end. We're gonna bring a drain straight out to the street. It already naturally drains that way. Yeah. It actually drains over to the existing uh, road into the multi-purpose building and drains down that ditch now. But it's got to be dug out about four feet to get that water to come straight on out to the road to keep it dry. Okay. It just looks like you... Or we'll put culverts in the back of it and build a road so that it drains the other way. Either way, you know, we just want to clean it up. Okay, but then how are you going to leave the buffer? You're talking about a there, there's already a, buffer. A, there's already a 10 yard 15 yard right. buffer between the edge of the slough and those flags that are out there and then there's another 10 yards between those flags and the existing uh, entry into the multi-purpose building okay. it just looks like it just looks like you've taken the overall what's left of the multi-purpose property and what you've already acquired and you just found the rest of the lines and shrinking it right down to the existing just what's left for just it leaves no nothing else there it's like you're just so slowly choking it down if I was looking at it I mean, the way it looks to me if you're looking you know, at it on linear paper and looking flat it looks that way if you go out there and stand well, I mean, on the ground like, you can see it that it's right I understand but I'm just saying the multi-purpose property was left right here this is what was left other than the property that you've already acquired okay it almost appears that, that now we've got a little corner here and a little corner here let's just squeeze it down a little more and that 
Well, the part on the right isn't as bad as the one on the back because well, let's you know, get through, if you don't mind, let's get through with A first, and, okay. and I'll try to answer that question as we get to it. And I've got a representation of the road around both of them to connect the two. Oh, okay. So, if we're done with A, you turn the page over and you see the parking lot that we want to do put behind Region Eight, and that road that's the T. And in that, you can't even see the. Uh, roadway that comes into the multi-purpose building. That's a Google Earth. And you see how far away that is from the existing road that comes in there on the left. Then you see a road that goes all around. Now the road to the left is going to go around and connect to the other side of the property. So that's a rendering of that. And this this parking lot that you're proposing here, what is that going to be serving? It's going to be serving a walking trail that goes down to the interstate and those water features alongside the interstate to begin to clean it up. How big a, I mean, I guess how yeah. big a parking lot? Yeah. That it's, was uh, four acres all told, I believe, four and a half acres that we got from Region 8 to do that. We'll take some amount of it. It's a big, it's a big rock out there, really. Most of it's uh, limestone surface as it is now. All right, so I'm over on B now. Jay, all right. catch up with us there. All right. All right, on the B side, which is the the furthest west side of the property, that's uh, 1.2 acres, I believe, there. And I've got another rendering behind this. But the key discussion here is we've also got the street. We took over the street that goes to Bayou Classic. We'll have gates there. We'll put gates up so people stop throwing deer carcasses and trash and everything else out there. Try to clean that up a little bit. And when we get a dozer, we're going to hit the ground and come around the multipurpose building to try to connect to the other side. It's the elevation in here that's the problem. If you look at these elevation lines, you see from that corner down, you drop about 12 feet off the back pad of where the uh, that long building is for the multi-purpose building. So there's a big pile of concrete back there and a drain, and you find two big red dots, and those two big red dots are about 20 feet higher than anything around them, just a big mountain of limestone. And that's the problem. We can't go from the left side of this triangle over there to connect that other parking lot without having to go all the way out to the power line to come back around. Be much easier to go between those two red dots. So it's the elevation that's the problem for us. Plus, we want to put gates up. We've uh, had conversations with uh, the board attorney concerning a fence around the property. That's not to keep anybody out or in, but ultimately in time, it's to keep kids from the Rankin Trails project from finding their way into that multi-purpose building, which that's what we don't want. And, you know, I don't know if we can stop it, but we can sure slow it down. And we've agreed, agreed to pay for half of that fence, whatever it works out to be. And we want to put gates up there. Uh, we're actively working on an amphitheater on this property. Uh, we were talking to a promoter last night, and that promoter's got an act coming into South Haven up there, uh, Kenny Chesney. And he's bringing in 19 trailer loads of equipment and 16 RVs and everything else with all his people on them. So he's got 35 vehicles that he brings in. Well, if we do a big concert out there, we're going to have to be working with the county to use that back parking lot and be able to navigate in and out of there with the road. Where's the amphitheater going? Uh, Where, I don't have my Rankin Trails map. It's about half a mile from this point. Yeah, it's way off. Okay. Let me say, because there's no way you can put an amphitheater behind no. here. Uh, uh, I'll bring back and share with, I'll share with you individually where that amphitheater is planned. Yeah, yeah well, the, originally I, it was discussed y'all were going to put it behind that. Right, it's that not. Button. That was the original idea. Yeah, I think Craig kind of thought that. Right, That's it's okay. further away from to the left. Is that the only time you've done that? Yeah, I was like, how are you going to put an amphitheater under that power line back there? If you stand at that point, <laughs> uh, actually, the if, if you stand at that point at the back of the barn and look to your left across the water, right there. There's elevation. Uh, it'll just butt that power line on the other side. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's B. And then to turn it over one more time, you can see the, the problem with the road. What we're trying to do is create a road that goes between those two red dots. It's no more complicated than that. So well, that's with the path with that one acre. And if you turn it over again, I create a path without the one acre where we got to go all the way out to the power line to come back around. No more complicated than that. That's a two-lane road. Yes, kind of like, something like a state park road. 
that we can control with Yates. So we're trying to connect the east and west sides of the property, or north and south, whichever way you'd like to look at it. How wide are these roads? How wide is this road? It will be about 30 feet. 30. And we'll build it with limestone first and let that settle over time, and we'll come back and put curb and gutter and asphalt. So, that's it in a nutshell. Um, Butch, I just that's hate the purpose of the room there. You know, we've well, this area you see back here that is cleared off, that's been cleared off in the last few years. You know, and, and if we go and give up this land, then we're committed. This is all we got. We have no other parking lots we can expand. This is all we got. Or and any other, uh, any other uh, hookup area or buildings, or anything. You know, I, I just, uh, I didn't, I thought it was too close. I wanted to give us a little more room to be able to operate on. That's that was my issue with it. Okay, I understand. But like I said, the part on the right hand side, you know, where it's not usable, like you said, there's nothing that we can do with it anyway. So I don't really have issue with that. I do want to leave a buffer, and I am concerned about once y'all going to clear all this out, you're going to start pressuring us to get something done, you know, to clean it up and. And, and I think that's been pretty much done. Sheriff's done a wonderful job of cleaning it up. Well, I think, you know, we, we would like to sit down and, and discuss to see about maybe making a very attractive looking fence all the way around it, you know, do a landscape project. Um, but that's not something we've gotten to yet, you know. Well, I think the reason why I talked to the mayor the other day, he talked, contacted me and uh, I did from now correct me if I'm not if I'm wrong, but you've already got a uh, bulldozer on the ground, or pretty much no, right. As soon as it dries out, <laughs> and you're uh, be starting on. Uh, That's exactly right. You're starting on uh, Shallow Park, if I'm not mistaken, and also starting at Tennis Park and Shallow okay. to begin with, and gonna move right out there. Whatever dollar we can get, you know, you rent those big dozers and for I a month, and we're gonna get every dollar we can out of it. That's the reason why I wanted him to come here today to kind of present this because. Uh, while he's got the big machinery out there, he wanted to go ahead and if we could get a uh, uh, some kind of a an agreement with that to allow them to keep on moving on theirs with the heavy equipment. So that's you know that's part of the process to try to get this. I know we've talked this thing for months, you know, trying to make a decision on this. Actually, it came up at Christmas, but. Well, that's really no, Greg, if you got equipment out there and you got a lot to work, it's not like it's going to. Oh, this, yeah. This right here is pending the equipment working. Correct. As long as. You can't move that fast. No, but as long as we just talk about it, I like that's the reason why I want to see the mayor in front of us to give us his exact what they would like to see versus what we, the board, will be willing to negotiate on. And I'm glad. I think he's got a great plan and is working his plan, but. I think we as a board need to understand that we're need about to have to spend some money because we are about to have to fence this in. Oh, yeah. So we need to decide what we're going to do, how correct. much money we're going to put in it. That's correct. Did we budget? Did we put, I think we budgeted some of that. For a fence across the front. 60. And then they, and then I think the, Brandon has said they would put money in to help on all the fence, correct? Correct. So. Yeah, let me clarify one thing. Right. We certainly haven't gotten clear in everyone's mind the scale, that is, both the sizing, how tall it is. Uh, It'll have to be eight foot. Uh, and, and what it looks like. I don't know exactly. Right. We haven't reached all those considerations. When I hear uh, the possibility that there is a the potential for a, quote, nice fence, that means different things to different people. And it may be that the Brandon Alderman are thinking that a nice fence is something different than what we may ultimately decide on. So I want to be careful about a commitment to pay half. At some point, we're going to need to sit down and talk specifically. Right. This is the kind of fence. Uh, this is what we can. This is what we can pay toward that, both from our end and their end, right. and, and try to reach a consensus. I think it, uh, what I appreciate is that the, that the city is ready to participate in a fence project. 
but I just want to kind of stay away from any specific numbers. And right. Point. Sure. I don't think. I don't think you'd want to quite commit to that if you don't know what we're even talking about doing, maybe. Oh, and we don't really know. There's a couple of different you know, things to think about, too, type on fence. fence project. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do a landscaping plan in conjunction with a fence project, um, I don't know that uh, a, a, I don't know that it would be necessarily economically feasible to put a really nice fence up and then cover it up with landscaping. Right. Yeah. If you're going to do a landscape project, you may want a utilitarian fence that has nice landscaping in front of it that what you notice is the landscaping. Right. Well, and, and uh, a lot of this is going to depend on mm -hmm. where it is. If it's at the entrance of the, the facility, it right. could be one type. If it's down the side that has a buffer, and yeah, it could be a different type. I mean, it, and then it just depends on where it's... And you know, with the, the gates. control over the facility, right? With the sheriff having control of the thing with the facility, he may want to have some input on. You got on something you want to say about the fence? fence. Yeah. I've, I've had all kinds of fun stuff done lately. I'm going to landscape this home, the, the main entrance to the storm room, around the building, and down there by the front. So I'm going to redo that, and I hate to cover all that up with a fence. I said, move the fence on, you know, maybe start it back. So I put that whole front on there, try to have a look at mine. Well, what I was talking about, a fence is an iron fence, you know. Mm -hmm. Something We've got to like have some type have. of fence, I would think. Um, well, the way I have that set up where my gate is, there's a ditch right there, so there's no way anybody can drive around anything. Mm -hmm. you have you got a gate? You got the gates yet? Got gate. Oh, yeah, the gates are up. No, I mean, you know, well, I think what we were talking about was, the, I think at one time we were talking about automatic. Like yeah. Gate. yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, whatever. The, 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 the light up being done, you can come on. Right. Come on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's see there, right there. That throws well, a different. The rest point of, of it, though, the reason why I say the landscaping is because we're going to be stuck out there. It's going to all be cut down. Everything is going to be flat out there. So all we're going to see is the back end of our facility. And I just would, I think eventually we're going to have to do that. Mm hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, it could be several different types of fences. It's How just according to where we want to put the landscaping. I mean, by us not giving you this back portion here, how much more is it going to cost you to go and build the road? Well, you see that zigzag well, around those how two much, mountains that are out there. How I'm much, trying to go between them and run yeah. around them both. Well, I'm trying to help you but and take care of myself, too. I just hate to I just hate to just shut us. Well, that's me. Our potential room completely down. As far as room, it's 1.22 acres is that uh, small triangle, and it hadn't got to be all at 1.22 acres. It's just enough to get around that corner to get between those mountains. So well, you just went down that property line and then came down the property line, 30 feet, 30 feet. Around that mountain of limestone. <coughs> if you just went down. Well, that see, that's why I was asking you, even on the part of the right side, across. why do you need right. everything that we have? left yeah. I guess you'd say I guess get back some something. security to keep buffering there and to have access to both sides of that slough to clean it up Bush let me get, come up this way for one second let me ask you a question here just to because it may be something that on this property line right here mm -hmm. where you could come something like this is there any possible way or how's that yeah. it's, just, it's a matter of just trying to get from over here to over yeah. here okay so just that's all, that's stay with the property line these two dots. That's all it is. stay with the yeah, property line the property lines yeah, you but you they can go down behind this parking lot and there's a big space right there you can see where that point is at. so we're not giving yeah so without that we're going to have to come all the way around here to come around right come this way but what i'm saying is if we follow the property lines go straight through here to come around this red dot. There's a big mountain. Well, no, stay in front of it. Oh, well, he's then, saying go right in front of it, but Yeah, oh, and yeah. then cut in. He's saying right here. Well, that's what I'm saying. Instead of go right through here yeah. instead of all right out that's right, right out the back door. As long as we can get to this point right here. So we can work that. So that way we're not giving up as much. See what I'm saying? I'll be glad to go I mean, if you didn't need but that's just for a number, fifty feet to allow you yeah. to be able to come through there. Absolutely. That's I think that's my point. Somewhat, why do we guess you have to give up everything that's left so you can get a road through here? 
Uh, well, that's, that's well, I know, but that's the way right it's here. coming across. It comes straight across. Proposed. That's what I'm saying. Straight across here. What I'm, and then back. See, if you, could, if you couldn't I come right through my, here. I went back to the benchmark survey, and I said, take this triangle right <coughs> here mm -hmm. and cut it down to right here mm -hmm. and right here mm -hmm. so we can figure out enough room where mm -hmm. we don't have to go down this hill and no. come back around to come over here. I said, I don't see why but this you is can't do this right this point right here. This, Right. Okay. Well, you're going down 15 feet. Remember well, I remember this point's here already. You've already established no. that. No, it's down at this point. This point's established. Yeah, this is just me drawing on the paper. Okay, but I mean, if you're drawing on paper, this was your road right here. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out a way to get around this corner. All right. Over if you got around this corner, why can't you come right on up? Yeah. Right here. Okay. That's more negotiating there. Yeah, and then, then over here, I'm still confused if you're going to take, you want to clean this slew up. And you won't be able to get all the way around it. It's going to be hard to leave a buffer there. You got to get all the way around. Uh, you know, the slew drains right here. Mm -hmm. so we just drain this thing yeah. and drain out mm -hmm. of here and get in there. All this is going to stay. So if, I, if you want to put it right up the middle of that and stop right here and come over, but up and here we can't get can this road. Right this way we can. We got to be able to use that road to get over here. That is. And get around this little line right here to come this way. What's wrong with this? That's what I, I mean. I had put that up, but what? About 40 feet. That's water right here. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah, go this way. There you go. See the elevation line? Right. You're falling off the bluff. It's like these are those bluffs that are over here. Right. And it's like these are the bluffs. Right? Don't forget you about it. 16 feet elevation from this point to this point. So we come out here to come around to get back over here. So you'd right. have to come out here to come around. Yeah, that road. If you go back to you'd road, have means you'd have this bluff here. See, there's a road right there. Mm -hmm. That road art. We put up gates right here, mm -hmm. and this is where we. I sold dynamite here. Right mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. That looked a lot better there, uh, Butch. That's. I think we can at least. So uh, to answer your question, though, we had to have property descriptions to bring to you. And the board attorney already has those yep. definitively, the next number of feet in each one of those triangles. Yes. Right. We've already done all that. So that's all we're trying to do is get a road around. Now, would that need to be deeded or a right, a right away or what? That'll be, That'll be through the board attorney. That's correct. Well, we then would we have to, work if the details. We want to give us some land. I'm assuming the, the city would either buy it or make a deal to put in money toward a fence or something. Right. And that's being worked out. You bring your checkbook. Twenty-four mm -hmm. <laughs> seven. You know, I, I think though it could also benefit the city too. Is if you do leave us some more room back here because we do have some hookups, and in the future we could have where we could have full hookups back there. You know, for more people coming in for ball fields because you're going to need somewhere for them to stay. Okay. Yeah, it's true. How much more? The problem we ran into last night was if we build an amphitheater and bring a big act in, we don't have anywhere to go with 25 semis. Well, that's you what know? I'm saying. Right. You know, I, I might. You, you could I know too. That's, that's the reason why I want that road and a gate back there so we can go through that gate to do whatever we that's need to do. That's what I'm saying. Do. You're going to need the use of some of this, probably. Yeah. There's no question about that. But I don't. I think we need to look on that back two acres. The, if you Why can don't just we go take out off there? I mean, before, corner. when all that we discussed this, that's where we left it. We thought you were supposed to be getting with us to go out there to look at it to see what we'd be okay with. We'd be glad to meet you out there anytime or your life. Yeah. You'd like it. Well, not, not on a cold day. <laughs> well, we'd be waiting until Sunday. I have to work in the cold all the time. Sooner the better, though, because we that's are right. making decisions right now. They are. They're making decisions. All right, so I'm, what... Uh, I'm available. I I'm just, available. Yeah. I've already walked it twice. Can I just briefly summarize the, the discussion and suggest that maybe the action point at this point is to have the mayor go back in touch with the engineers, uh, revisit the issue of the 1.22, and let's see if we can figure out exactly what is absolutely got to have it out of that 1.22 okay. uh, and, and get us a revised description of that document. Uh, we, we may want to fine tune the 
I just caught the five acre piece on the front end. The A parcel, we may want to fine tune that after Jared's comments about you know, how much of that exactly is required versus what we might be able to look at squeezing that so that we don't get up as much as five acres or six acres, or whatever it is. So we may want to look at that as well. And so what if we got together, let you guys get together with the mayor to go and actually physically look at it? Uh, get okay. a vision of these two legal descriptions and then come back as soon as we can and try to wrap a bow on this thing. Okay. Okay, good. I, I'm, I'm looking right here. I don't know why you couldn't come right up the property line of the back two acres. I mean, you got a 15 mile an hour, so it doesn't matter if you got a sharp curve. It's not like you went flying through there and hook around and just take the That's corner, what we discussed the corner of the back yeah. two acres. We discussed that a second ago, uh, yep. Jared. So. Right. Your engineers may need an easement for the purpose of the construction of the road, those kinds of things. That may be of some that may be some of the thinking that went right. into the original one point two two. Okay. Being able to work the road, maintain the road, that type of thing. We need to keep that in mind as part of it. So maybe we can look at some of it being in fees, some of it being an easement right of way, some of it being drainage, that type of thing. Uh, but anyway, we can cover <coughs> all that out. If that, okay. if that's suitable right. as it relates to that particular part of the discussion. The idea is that we need to release the calf on the amount of property. Well, let's get this uh, let's get this ready for uh, within our next uh, couple weeks or so. Or next? Aren't we meeting next couple of board meetings? Yeah. We'll have it ready. Gotcha. I don't know. We'll be ready. Your next board meeting is when? First. First. I'll be ready. First or for the fifteenth. Like I'll that. have it to you before your board meeting. Okay. Perhaps we could we could move that and look at it at the work session and yeah. get all our discrepancies ironed out. And we also, it's not going to be worth the other beans unless we get to meet out there. Before. Well, not only that, we do have the photo op out there, so we can look at it all together at the same time. Okay. So. Okay. A different set of clothes on when you do the little rock and you do the walking. Okay. You better be ready to get your boots. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to shift gears. Uh, like I say, yesterday I talked to the Rank County School District and I put it this way. We're going to talk specifically about generalities or we're going to talk general about specifics. You know, there's discussion about building two new buildings in downtown Brandon. That's part of this discussion I'm going to move into now. And the next couple of pages you see in there are some renderings of something I think we can do. Uh, this is going to take cooperation between the school district, this board, and the city to achieve these things. We've got, and this is how it will benefit the county. Right now, all your employees, when they come to work, anybody coming to Brandon to take care of any county business comes down Highway 80 to get in the front of this property. I suggest to you, you've got an opportunity to build some streets in the back back here that go around the jail and tie into uh, what we know as College Street up by Merchant Farmers Bank. And why this is a critical point in time right now is because Joe McGee is about to begin construction in March on 471, which will be a new five lane going up, up to the city limits. So that will encompass a new bridge on uh, the interstate, flyover bridge over the railroad tracks. And we've got an opportunity to improve traffic in downtown Brown with the schools, obviously, because at Felicity Street, the other side of that street is school district property. And uh, this side of it, I believe, and where you potentially want to put one of these buildings is on county property. So we've got an, we've got an opportunity here to do something. So I've got some general ideas. I'm not going to spend any money on engineering until I know we have some commonality and thought. And if you would open up a couple of those pages, I'm looking one now that says Group 2. On the right side of that page, mm -hmm. you'll see something that says Group right. 2. Yep. And there's a potential for a road to go around from Highway 80 all the way around up here to North College Street. We can extend Felicity Street to the north, basically building a new city block in there that would cross over uh, North Street. That's a very real possibility and it's kind of a game changer for us all, for the school district and for counties, all county businesses. Just envision, if you would, you're coming north on 471, you cross over the interstate and you have the ability to turn left at a traffic signal 
and come all the way down here behind any county building or the potentiality of a new uh, court building there behind Trustmark in that area. So that's kind of a general discussion that's going on. And I would say that that is a very real possibility. And we're willing to spend the engineering fees on this to discover this if you're receptive to it. So I kind of need to know, you know, what your thoughts are. I don't expect a, an answer out of you right now, but I'd like you to digest on this a little bit. If you'll go to the next page, you'll find another street rendering. And this, is, this one is a little bit more immediate. Uh, we don't need to know today, but I need to be in conversations with Joe McGee concerning this. If you go underneath the interstate, bottom right of that page on North Street and turn left on what we know as Lakeland Drive, I bet everybody in this room travels Lakeland Drive. You recognize it as an unsafe street. Goes around and ties in at Brandon Cash and Carry. Where that new, on the left, you see the existing roadbed of 471, and you see the new roadbed of where that five lane is going to go. I would suggest to you that we can tie into that roadbed and create a nice travel path to come in underneath the interstate behind the jail right there as well. Why this is a critical point in time to talk about this is I understand there's somewhere between 800 and uh, excuse me, 80 and 100,000 yards of spoil that Joe McGee Trucking is going to have to move out of that hill, which is on 16 section property. Checking with them, if we're moving dirt on 16 section property and it's not leaving 16 section property, it's kind of a no brainer. So we can build, get the bed of a street built there and then top it off with good dirt to build a road into the backside of Brandon coming in behind the jail here. So I see that as a, a real winner for us all. We are creating travel routes out of the downtown and into downtown, and now's the time to do it. It's not a time to wait next year and think about it. The next page is another rendering, uh, kind of along the same words. I don't know that MDOT would allow us to tie in where that first page was. This is called Group 3, and extend that road and tie in sort of where the old church was there on the corner of uh, Lakeland where it strikes 471. And both of these, there are two big parcels there that are unleashed by the school district, and they appear to be receptive to this. So I'll let you interact with them, uh, discuss it with Grumpy or whoever else you want to discuss it with. Uh, but again, we need to be talking to Joe McGee to give him some idea about where we want to go with that spoil material to help get this roadbed started. So we've got opportunities there, and I would like you to really consider this. Now these. these drawings you see, I've got about a dozen more in downtown Brandon of where we're considering to work, start building new streets. We realize we've got problems with school district and county services growing. We're a growing county. Glad to hear that. Sorry to bore everybody here with a, uh, other mayor out here, but I can tell you Rankin County is continuing to grow. Ooh. We had uh, 40 million in new home valuation construction in Brandon uh, in 2014 and still going. And, you know, you might think that uh, some of you might giggle on your breath a little bit to wonder the thing between Pearl and Brandon and Flowood. I'm glad Flowood's booming. I'm glad things are going on in Pearl. And I can also tell you, as far as the big tip dollars that you just discussed, that, yes, our doors is being knocked off. And that same thing is about to happen in Brandon. And it's just a wonderful thing for Rankin County. So we really need to think critically right now. We're going through a new comprehensive plan. And we're planning on these roads and streets, and we'll build them as we can. I hope you like the, the lights out front. Uh, that will lead to sidewalks and hopefully underground utilities one day. So we care about what our downtown looks like, and we care about our county services that are here. So we feel like we've got a stake in all of our future by how we represent Rankin County when people come into Brandon. And that's kind of what these new streets are about. So those are conceptual things. Now, if you go on one more page, you'll find a rendering of Luckney and where this ties into Luckney. This actual book I've got is missing one page. So I don't know which one you're looking at. Well, there you go. Luckney Road. Luckney Road and 471. Um, my understanding is that the roadbed from Luckney Road up 471 is set to be complete by August. In other words, they're going to be working on that road 24 hours a day. I don't know the reasons why MDOT put those timelines on that. Then they'll fall back and begin to work on the bridges. However, 
Luckney Road is a state aid road. This end of Luckney Road has never been improved. And it's a state aid road and it needs to be improved. So I'm speaking on behalf of the city of Brandon and all of us that travel Luckney Road going back and forth to Flowood. I'm speaking to all the people that live on Luckney Road because it's unsafe. And what I would propose to you is that we have an opportunity right now to improve seven tenths of a mile, it's eight tenths of a mile from Luckney Road to the city limits. One tenth of that, or one fraction of that, is already going to be redone when they do 471. So we've got seven tenths of a mile. If we can find some money to work on Luckney Road to improve it so that it matches the other end of Luckney Road. So there's a safe connector road between 471 and Highway 25. I think it's a critical connector. And it's only going to be traveled more when this highway project is complete. Um, bike paths and pedestrian paths are a big thing right now. The, the reality is if we do this North Street thing in downtown and you like the idea of building new streets in downtown Brandon, you'll be able to get on a bicycle or run from the monument here in downtown Brandon underneath the interstate, cross over Highway 471, go down the hill. We'll take, we're already going to take over the old roadbed. It's going to be named Depot Street to Luckney Road, and then a bike path crossing over 25, up to Spillway Road. You just open up everything with a good corridor back and forth. And it, it's a critical piece of our future. And I would ask that you seriously consider that. Now, funding, how do you get the, the money to do that? You know, I understand that the county has gotten 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and according to Mr. Baker, there's another 800, 900,000 coming from the what they did in the legislature last year. So I think you've got somewhere around 2 million plus unallocated to a project. And I would propose to you, if you would dedicate that to improving Luckney Road, that we will will pay for everything else if it's uh, right-of-way acquisition, if it's utilities, moving utilities, we'll handle all that in the city because it's every bit in the city to improve that roadway. So we'll approach it as an improvement, uh, just like uh, you work with us on the, the, the project that's about to start here, down here on uh, Lewis Wilson and, and Trickle Bridge Road. Same thing. Uh, we'll do a curb and gutter project. Uh, we'll make it a, a nice avenue that connects Brandon and Flowood. What worse is $2 million coming from? Yeah. Uh, you've already been allocated uh, 1.3, I think, of state aid money that came to Rankin County from the state aid project. Oh, we done spent that. That's being spent right now on uh, Highway 43 and 40, 049. No, that, what you're talking about is on LSRP project. So this would have to be a state aid project. So yeah. where's this 800000 at? Well, what I've been uh, we do have, we do have Glad to have y'all, Mayor. Do I? Uh, we did have some additional money come in. Oh, this is what you and Dale told us about a month ago, where y'all were going to plan and some we roads. We need to extend our overlay project because we had some state aid issues where we have to, the county has to maintain the state aid roads. That's the reason we have to I thought we just overlaid Luckney. No, we we overlaid Luckney up to the city limits of Brandon. Right. Yeah. So see, we, what are you talking about? State we're using about maintenance Luckney money road. there. See, and and you can't go in and, and spend maintenance money on part of a state aid road that hadn't been upgraded and improved. And Correct. This little section, why in the past I have no word that it was never upgraded. So that's what you're talking to them about is finishing it out. Yes. Sir. Okay. All the way. So to this is showing up. Okay. Uh, bike trail, a most purpose trail, all the way up though. I believe we can achieve that. Huh? I believe we can achieve that. Well, not with that kind of money. No, no. Uh, so, 
And so basically, I'm, are yes, you sir. trying to extend state aid all the way to 471? It is already a state aid road. See, it's on the state aid system. system. But it stops at the city limits. Correct. It stops. No. It, it, no. It, it comes all the way to 471 already. And it's just it's never been improved. The part that's on the system. The part that's been improved stopped short of 471. And like I said, I don't know why that was, I think, back in here. At was the was city limits. Yeah. That's where it stopped. Right. Where the improvement where stopped. Where the improvement stopped. Yeah. That's what I said. Well, but, in the system, there, I don't know. but in the system, yeah. it is a state aid all the way to 471. Well, yeah, there's a lot of them that are state aid, that, but <clears throat> you can't do certain things to them until they have these certain improvements, which, which is correct. what we talk we about all the time. Money. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what the I think, upgraded. which is I think is what Brandon is wanting to basically work together with the the county to be able to put together a plan to make sure that this does get improved. Right, but so it, what I'm saying though, some correct me, but I think if I'm right, some of it can't be used on certain things until it's what doesn't make sense until it has these improvements like a shoulder, for instance. Yeah, that's correct. And it doesn't make any sense because right. it can't be used for construction, reconstruction. It has to be used for basically maintenance. Because uh, I know because I've we've had some other roads that we thought, man, these are the, where it needs to be. But because they didn't meet the criteria that state aid required, we couldn't use it on them. And and one reason, one thing was there were no shoulders. And you're thinking, well, how do I get shoulders if we can't use the money to? Reconstructed. So anyway, that's just some things that to you look know, at. I understand what you're involved. saying. And depending right. on this money, if it comes about, it depends on whether they send it Rankin County's portion, whether they send it as SAP money or LSBP money. <laughs> uh, it's good to learn we're planning issues, on doing that. But LS, when they send LSBP money, there's only two things you can do: spend it on bridge, or you can spend it on local roads. Just like our existing LSRP right. project, that was LSBP money because our bridge is in good shape. Now, if it comes as state aid money, then you really can't spend state aid money uh, on low. You spend it on something that's on your route to upgrade. It. Right. That's that's what it's a little complicated, but you know, if I can understand it. Yeah, we start all those RPs and SRPs and LPSs. Yes. yes. What is the distance between <coughs> the city limits of Flowood and the city limits of Brandon on that road? Any of I mean, They don't uh, meet. We don't meet there, do we? No, we've got a county piece in it, just a small. A county piece of Henderson Road that comes in right. to Pearl on the back side. Of all that's been improved. Y'all go all the way now. But it's been, it, been improved by just been overlaid. No, whole road, Henderson Road, the whole road. Oh, Henderson, no, I thought you were talking about Luckney. Yeah. The whole Luckney Road. No, right. but the we're only lucky. portion that hadn't been improved is the portion in the city, and that was annexed in 2007. Yeah, if you know where the two churches are on Luckney going north towards right. Flowood, there's a Methodist church on the left. There's a non-denominational church on the right. Right. They're very close. Uh, that is within 100 feet of the city limits of Brent. That piece right there where it leaves the city limits is county. It's county all the way to Henry. Then Flowood picks up at Henderson. Okay. Correct. So that portion there. Are y'all going to go meet? Yeah, we want to meet. We want people traveling and shopping. No, no. Are you going to move the city limits on out? Not in the foreseeable future. So, I've know. never understood personally why we only asphalted all the way to the portion, you know. Well, he may have answered your question, though, of money going on. Why, why the yeah. Right. Money came from. Because you can't spend overlay money on a state aid road or road that's on a state aid system that hadn't been improved. <laughs> See what I'm saying? All those. I mean, there's so many. Okay, so let's let's get to the chase then. then. How do we improve it to be able to spend that money then? How do we do this? Well, it? it's been overlaid. We overlaid it before. Well, How did we do it then? First thing that needs to needs to happen and we've requested it and we don't have it yet is I need to see a set of the 471 plan. Correct. We're going to keep working off of it. Right. And see how far that project is coming up low yeah. the road. True. Correct. Then that will establish our limit on that end. And then we can work 
And the next step is we put together a program for state aid to do the work. Okay. And then once that program is approved, then we can go to work to the in the room. Well, when I was at yesterday, well, never mind. We, this, a lot of the stuff we're doing, should, we could do it with work session material. So I don't, I'll tell you about it later. Go ahead. Just okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. I know it's, it's getting long. Uh, Wood, I'd like to come back and talk about Lugney Road. Maybe we'll know a few more details about that project during that work session. Good for you. Can you get? No, yes. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, fine with me. And can I'm just you talking get some things I heard, learned at the conference, mid winter conference. Uh, Mayor, what I'd like, I need to get from you, if if possible, from the 471 project to get into Buster's hand, a map of where, how far that's going to come up so we can actually start a work. Uh, I think I'll have those for you this afternoon. That'll help the sp uh, well, move the project. Well, it's good to know we were planning that anyway, since so first I heard about it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you all for what you did. Okay, let me fold this up. And okay. Craig, was that the last piece you got in your, on your section? Okay, we've got Miss Laura Oster, County Administrator. I know you are. You need to drink a water or something before you start talking. I mean, you're worn down, I know. Yeah, I think as long as it got in in time and stuff, I think that's the major. It's dated. Right. Right. even heard what the numbers were on the bids on the others to begin with so that's not been publicized they, right we have right. not even disclosed that that day we just opened and took it under advisement okay so do we need to add that item to the we are going to acknowledge that um, bank club uh, bid was received on time and that that okay let's add that item to the agenda if I have a motion to entertain a motion on that I'll make a motion to add that item Motion by Mr. Johnson. Second. Second by Mr. Bishop. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like side. Motion carries. Okay, do I have a motion to accept? Uh, a motion to, to make a finding on the record that the Bank Plus depository bid was received in accordance with the bid requirements. Okay, I'll entertain a motion on that. So move. So move. Motion second. by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Bishop. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay. Based upon all that, okay. All the information.
not to the correct count. Huh. So it left this individual with uh, the appearance that they had not paid their fine. And you know the rest of the story. Yes. Uh, so the request is for a reimbursement to uh, Miss Betty Lorraine Martin Berry uh, of $172, which is the amount of the fine that she paid. Uh, we are not going to act today on the um, on the uh, of, of, of an additional request that goes with that, where there is a claim that the remittance of a she paid a second check because uh, they told her you, you had paid. She paid a, she paid two times, so we're refunding the second payment that she made. We understand that she is later going to claim. We think that that second payment put her in overdraft. So we've got additional work that we're going to be looking at on that. But this would be for reimbursement of $172. So I would ask that you consider adding this item to the agenda. So we'll move. Motion by Mr. Morrison. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Add this item to the agenda. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. It would be authority. Okay, do I have a motion to accept this? So moved. Motion second. by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Keith. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Are we ready to proceed on? I'd like to take this under advisement until we come back this afternoon after the recess. Okay. Good. All right. So do we need a motion on that at all? Okay. No. Gotcha. All right. Any motion recess to one o'clock today. Got a motion by Mr. Bishop, second by Mr. Morrison to recess until one o'clock this afternoon. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. This motion was carries. supposed to be shorter than the one this afternoon. Well, all the stuff. Oh, my gosh. Well, just don't look at that show, too. That's the second half.